Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Emmons. I'm a member of the National Physics Rules Committee and a national ES. And I'd like to talk to you today about the optics event and in, in particular how to count the line crossing as part of the score. The 2025 rules for optics introduced some new scoring elements. I've listed out the components of the score in 2025. The written exam counts for 45%. The accuracy score is 25%. That's the same as last year. There's this new line crossing score that counts for 20%. This, this replaces the number of mirrors used score from last year. And then the barrier mirror uh, counts for 10%, which is higher than last year. This video explains in detail how to score the line crossings component of the score. So to start, we're going to look at the laser shoot setup and how it is laid out. Much of this is the same as last year. Uh, in particular, the, the box is the same size, uh, the ruler, uh, on the target wall is the same, the laser is in the same place, uh, and, and the midline down the, down the center is also the same as last year. What's new are these grid lines, um, four grid lines, two vertical and two horizontal arranged in a kind of a tic-tac-toe configuration that divide the box into nine zones. Um, the lines also extend up the walls which makes it easier to uh, see them when, uh, when you're using templates in the box. The basic idea behind the line score is to, to, uh, to score the, the total distance traveled by the laser beam, but it's not exactly the distance traveled. We don't try to measure exactly that because that would take very, a very long time. Um, instead, we use the number of crossings of these grid lines as a, as a proxy for that. So uh, this slide here quotes Rule 5D and its five special cases, which, uh, which um, detail how to compute the line score. But reading these is hard. Um, and, and so instead of, instead of going through the words in detail, I'm going to go through a bunch of examples that uh, illustrate all of these um, pieces of the, of the line score. So I'm going to start with uh, a very, very common configuration that competitors used last year, which uh, a lot of um, event supervisors call the four and done mirror placement. Um, it was, was far and away the most common that we saw last year across multiple states. Um, and it, and a, a large part of the reason is that it makes it easy to ac maximize your accuracy score while scoring most of the, the, the score for the number of mirrors used. But here I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, uh, count the line score that this uh, scores in, in detail here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go piece by piece. Uh, you'll see that the, the four student placed mirrors are labeled A, B, C, and D. And I'm gonna start at the laser and trace the laser beam through and count up the score. So this first segment here from the laser to uh, mirror A uh, scores nothing um, because there is, there's no score, no line crossing score until the beam hits a student placed mirror. And in this segment, it hasn't hit mirror A yet, so it scores no line crossings. In this particular configuration, it also happens not to go across any grid lines, but even if it did, it would score nothing here. So moving on to the segment from mirror A to mirror B, you see this crosses one line at the red circle there, so that scores one. And then when we go from mirror B to mirror C, that crosses two, uh, crosses both of the vertical grid lines at the red circles, so that scores two. And then going from mirror C to D, scores two as well. Now there's two special cases that come into play here. For that top circle, you'll note that the laser beam already crossed that top grid line uh, back on its trip from mirror A to mirror B, 
but that's okay. Recrossing the same grid line counts again. So that still counts as one. Uh, and then the one from the bottom, uh, the bottom grid line as well. The other special rule here is, um, is that crossing the midline does not count. It's only the, the four grid lines that count, not the midline. And then the last segment is from mirror D to the wall, and that scores zero because it doesn't go across any grid lines. Um, so, so you see the total line score here is five crossings. Um, and, and then finally, I'll just point out that the barrier mirror was not used here, so the barrier score is zero. So the combined line and barrier score is five out of a possible 30 points, uh, which is um, perfectly valid, but it's not that great of a score for the line score and, and barrier score. So now we're going to look at a different configuration here. This mirror placement is actually in the rules. It's on the last page of the rules, and I've just lifted it from there uh, verbatim, and I want to talk about how this scores. So I'm going to do the same thing, going starting with the laser and moving on through segment by segment. So from the laser to mirror A, again, scores nothing uh, because the beam has not hit a student-placed mirror yet. And then from A to B, scores 2. Now, it only crosses grid lines at one point, but it crosses at an intersection. So it's actually crossing both of those grid lines and therefore accounts for two. And that's that's special case two under rule 5D. Um, on the way from mirror B to mirror C, we actually get three line crossings. It crosses the top horizontal, the left-hand vertical, and then the bottom horizontal. Uh, and you, you notice again, crossing the midline does not count. Then from mirror C to the barrier mirror scores two uh, because it's crossing the bottom uh, horizontal line and, and recrossings count, so that counts again. And then it's crossing the left-hand vertical again, and so that counts also. So we get two more there. And then when we go from the barrier mirror to mirror D, we get two uh, crossing the top horizontal and, and we're touching the left-hand vertical at mirror D, so that counts another time. And then from D to the wall, we get two. Now, you'll note that uh, as the beam leaves mirror D, it's, that does not count as a crossing because we all, already counted that crossing as the line came into mirror D. Uh, so that's special case three. Then we cross the the two horizontals on the way to the wall, and, and then once again, crossing the midline doesn't count. So we get a total of 11 in the line crossings, and the uh, barrier mirror is also used for 10, so we get a total of 21 out of 30 on that setup, which uh, scores very, very well, um, uh, although it, it, I should be honest that this is not an easy setup to achieve. Um, so there's one more um, special case that I that I really want to look at here, um, and that is the case w where the barrier mirror is actually facing the laser. So I've turned it around here in this case, and um, and you know this is a choice that the event supervisor can make if they so desire. They can have the barrier mirror facing any which way they want. So if it happens to be facing the laser, then of course it's very easy to get the laser beam to hit it. You just have to not block it on its way to the mirror, barrier mirror. But the question is, how does this score? Um, and so I'm once again going step by step, going from the laser to the barrier, this looks like it crosses one of the grid lines, but there is no score until the beam hits a student-placed mirror. And then again, from the barrier mirror to mirror A, again, no score, even though it crosses two grid lines, because there is no score until the beam hits a student-placed mirror, and A is the first student-placed mirror in this setup. The barrier mirror is placed by the ES. But then, just to, to finish this out, going from A to B, we get two, and from B to C, we also get two. From C to the wall, we get zero, uh, 
and then we did use the barrier mirror, so we get 10 for the barrier score. So this counts a total of 14, which is uh, 14 out of 30. It's a Midland score there. Um, all right, uh, there's one last aspect of this that I've not talked about, and that's rule 5D5, the last of the special cases. Um, and I've, I've written it out again here, um, but, but this, this rule is actually difficult to understand uh, just reading it. Um, and so I wanted to, wanted to just say a word about what, what this really means. What it really means is that you don't want to try and bounce the beam back and forth multiple times between two mirrors. If you do, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. You, your, your, your setup will still score, but the extra line crossings from the extra bounces will not count. Um, on, only the first crossings between those two mirrors will count. Um, so, and you know, this is maybe a good thing because setting up a setup like this is actually remarkably difficult. So uh, you just, now you know you don't have to try. So uh, in, in conclusion here, I just wanna say a few words about thinking through your approach. Um, it, you know, it's all about the trade-offs between the accuracy score, the line crossing score, and the barrier mirror score. Um, if you uh, if you try to try to do a very very good job on accuracy, then you're going to lean towards something like the classic four and out that boosts your accuracy because the mirror placements are pretty easy, but it scores few line crossings. If you add line crossings, you'll boost that score but that does have a tendency to lower your accuracy. And then of course the barrier mirror is a real challenge to use because teams uh, don't know its placement or angle in advance, uh, which is why the bonus is larger this year. So you'll just have to uh, experiment and think it through and try out a whole bunch of scenarios and decide on what, what kind of approach you want to take. So I hope that helps you to understand how to score the event this year. Um, thank you very much and uh, have a good time.